Hey guys, so today I would like to talk about what makes a sound rem rememberable, like what makes a sound stick. And I've thought about this for quite a while now, and I would like to share my thoughts with you, uh, my personal opinion, and some examples on how you can learn from other songs. Um, so personally, I'm really into Japanese media. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not into Western media. I just really like um, Japanese games, like um, Atlas games. I'm, I really like uh, the Persona series. And recently, I also gotten really into um, Falcon games, like the E series and Trails in the Sky and Trails to Zero and Owl. And I've also played Cold Steel now. So I I have been expanding my horizon quite a bit now. And... I would like to share what I came across when I've started analyzing these songs. Uh, I've also um, played three Danganronpa games. Uh, it's like this mystery murder uh, game. And the music is quite uh, eerie. Um, I might do like a separate video on that music because I feel like it's very specific, like it's like this mystery and uncertainty to it. So I don't really think it fits into like EDM, hardcore tech course type of sounds. So let's jump into the first example here. So this is I Believe by Choji Megaro. It plays in the end during Persona 5 Royal. And um, the song is written in B minor. And I will, I'm going to play the main motive of this song now. So this is how the song starts off. It's very powerful. Um, I'll probably end up layering the original song uh, in post, but um, let's jump to the the chorus and the verse now. So if you notice something, it's, there's like this motive that's like being repeated. So it kind of sticks out. Let me show you. Like this year, the B to D, it's being repeated so many times in the song and it just kind of sticks around. I believe. Like it adds this familiarity to it, but it doesn't repeat too much. It's just in the beginning. Uh, but because it's repetitive, but not too repetitive, it sticks with you. So this is one example of how um, music can catch the. Uh, listeners attention and also take up brain space because you'll be thinking about this song for quite a while if not for your whole life so I'm gonna open another song um, which I've transcribed uh, where is it there we go so I believe this song played in the orchestra tower of um, uh, Trails to, to Azure. Um, the game is not out in in the West, but there are some fan translations which are really good. So if you didn't play it yet, I really highly recommend you do so. But I don't know, for some reason, this one track, which is randomly played, really catch my attention. So I'm going to play this now.
So, if you notice, the key changed here. Um, this note is wrong, though. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah, I think it's this note here. Exactly. So, the initial key was C minor, and I believe it changed down to B minor, if I'm correct. So, in video game music, key changes are very common and um, kind of expected at this point because everyone does it now. So, um, but what can we learn from this, right? Um, so, if I understood correctly, this C sharp here is the root of the initial song, right? Uh, initial part. But... Um, when it jumps to E, that is still in the key of both keys. So, as you can see here with the ghost notes, um, they share this common key. So, this is kind of like the entrance point to the next key, if that makes sense. Because your ears hear the previous chord and then the next chord and they still fit right but now because we have this entry point we can change the key uh, because as you can see um g is not in this scale but it is in b minor but <laughs> So that was the bridge. It's still using the top notes from the initial uh, initial scale, but now we have we in we kind of hinted at the key change, but now we're fully changing. Also, what this does if you um if you decide to also transcribe songs um it helps you understand how songs are made like for sure you listen to it and you'd be like amazed but what's the like how how did it get made in the first place right and it, it's all it's opening up so many like um questions in your head it's amazing um i'm gonna open the next song now Oh, this is another Trails to Azure. Uh, it's actually the opening to, the, to that. Um, uh, it's from the Evolution version, though, which um, I did not play the Evolution version, but I looked at the Evolution opening and I really liked it. So uh, There we go. And after the song... I will go into another song and um, we'll look into how I included this thing in my, in my own song, which I didn't release yet, but I will soon. So, if you paid attention, what is the common note that that's like getting repeated? So, if you paid attention, you would say it's these two here, and then again these two. But then 
um, just think of it as like um, call and response, right? So duh, it's like the question, duh, 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 duh. it's like the answer, and then it's, it's repeating again. So this is the trails to zero opening. Um, I did not transcribe the whole song, but what I did was the initial part of the song, which I'll be playing now. <laughs> So what really captured the attention of me was these, the, like this beautiful chord section. This inspired me on so many levels and I tried to understand it a bit, but um, like there isn't really much to understand here. It's just um, really beautiful written chords. Uh, so. This inspired me to include this in my new song, which hasn't been released yet. Um, I'll be opening the project now. And I'll talk to you about it once it's open. All right, so it has been like two minutes, I think, three minutes. So this project is loaded now. So I'm going to play the drop section of the, my song. <laughs> If you paid attention to the previous song, what I'm talking about is, hold on, let me find it, there. It is this part. So I transcribed this to the key of my song. I kept the chords the same pretty much, I think. Um, it fits perfectly and that's this like really refreshing um, note. To the song and i think i think it's okay to like i don't think anyone can copyright chords or chord progressions so to say um like you shouldn't feel ashamed to um i don't like using the word copy copy but inspiration is essentially copying something and adding your own taste to it right um which i did here so again don't be ashamed to um look up inspiration like Everything you're using right now, like every song you're hearing, is basically a remix or a continuation of an idea. Like you won't see an original idea nowadays because um, how you have an quote unquote original idea, idea nowadays is you take something that's proven to work and you add your own flair to it, your own twist. So, a good example is would be YouTube channels, right? So, what works for a YouTube channel? Have a good personality. Have uh, upload regularly, um, and just connect with your community, right? But this formula has some variables that constantly change with like the general population, so to say. So I think what I'm seeing now is like a trend where more laid back and more quality content content producers are like having a rise like i recently subscribed to um some science food cook and that really clicks with me because he's also very personal um yeah ethan schlebowski is like a polish guy living in america i really like his takes like he introduced me to like this cookbook from uh kenji lopez uh the food lab and Okay, I'm getting way out of um, topic here. So anyway, guys, I hope I helped you. Um, this is kind of a random video. Um, I'll, uh, I'm reading the comments, by the way. So if you have any suggestions to next videos, uh, let me know. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.